This video is sponsored by Surfshark. Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel and to my 1999 Mercedes CLK 320 Cabriolet. Now I bet most of you forgot that I even owned this car and to be honest with you, most of the time I forgot that I own this car as well and that's because it's actually just been sat here at my parents' house for the rest part of oh, probably two months and it's currently sawned, which means here in the UK it's not taxed or insured so it can't technically be driven legally on the roads. However, today we are featuring it on the channel because I've got, well, it's, it's not that exciting. I'll be, I'll be quite upfront with you, but we have got a couple of things that I want to install on the car. Firstly, an original style grill, front grill for the car. Uh, this has some sort of facelifted or later model one, which obviously a previous owner at some point has put on the car. Doesn't look great. I didn't actually realize when I bought it that it wasn't original, but many, many of you in the comments did tell me. So I've gone ahead and ordered one of these original ones. So we're gonna fit that and also, Every Mercedes should still have this. A Mercedes emblem, plinth, I'm not sure exactly what you call it, but we're gonna also try and install that too. Now that is actually it. I did want to order and source some original wheels for this car because again, this is on some aftermarket, I think 18 inch AMG wheels, which just don't really work. They don't suit the car and they're not right for this sort of mark or era of Mercedes and so um, I want to replace those however I've not been able to source any so if you do know anywhere I can source them or if you can source some for me or you have some that I can buy from you um, do let me know because I'd be very interested to change these wheels to at a later date. Anyway to recap for those of you that are potentially new to the channel or haven't been here long enough to know what this car is well essentially the reason I've got this car it was a saving grace really it was bought out of necessity it was bought literally to get me and my girlfriend home from holiday in wales when the range rover broke down uh, my range rover that i still have now we took it uh, to wales on its first road trip it was all very exciting until the brakes failed it turned out to be some corroded and snapped brake lines and it meant the car was stuck in wales for about a week or two weeks even getting repaired we had to leave it there because they couldn't get the parts in time um, for us to go home and we had to get home back to the to London for, for a various number of reasons and so the only option really was to buy this it cost me a grand it got us home and that's pretty much all it's done so far so I love this car because you know it's it's done that for us and it will always be the saving grace car however I've got three others and it just doesn't get driven. So today, let's give it a little bit of love. It's a little bit dirty, but we're gonna give it some new parts. Hopefully it'll look a little bit more original, keep you guys a bit happy. And yeah, if you do know anywhere I can get some of those wheels, I've looked everywhere, eBay, Marketplace, you name it, I've looked, but I just can't find any. So that would be good to do those too. What I would like to do then before we actually get started is get the roof off so that we can see this car in all of its glory. The sun is gleaming today and so, it only makes sense, doesn't it? Oh, I recognize the smell in here. That is so familiar. I love that. But let's start it up because I'll be totally honest with you. Um, the battery all seems to be working fine and it really doesn't get switched on at all. No one uses it, like I say, it is sawned and off the road. I have started it when I've been at home, uh, maybe once every two or three weeks. And if you follow me on Instagram, you'll know that because I do tend to post story updates with, well, all the cars, but this, uh, although you guys on YouTube haven't seen it. So do follow me on Instagram if you want to see sort of daily updates. But look, battery all seems to be working fine. Radio is working. That's good. Indicator's working. Is that an indicator? Yes. Let's see if it starts though. In park. Lovely stuff. Look at that. And a very smooth start as well. This, of course, being a 3.2 V6, I bet. It sounds pretty nice and burbly. It does indeed sound pretty good. Anyway, let's pop the roof off. See if that all still works fine. I thought as we're filming with this today, we might as well do a little bit of a inspection, I suppose, and warm up of everything. So I'm pretty sure that comes down and then you twist anti-clockwise. There you go, windows come down by themselves. And then, I just press this down or up. There we go. And the car seems to be, all seems to be working fine. And this bit comes off and I have to push it. 
like that and then resume it and oh hang on I'm gonna switch hands here that then continues to come down fantastic such an intricate mechanism this there we go and a little bong to tell me that the roof is complete wow gosh guys look at this if you do remember back a few months I valet obviously got their hands on this and did a full clean of the interior lots of people actually said about the seat belts how how could they have missed them well they're really difficult to clean and we did everything in a day um, normally for a detail like that they would keep the car for two or three days and so basically cleaning these properly would require taking them out of the car entirely so well spotted you guys obviously they stand out like a sore thumb against the really clean interior but there quite simply just wasn't the time to do the seat belts as well I'm sure you guys can understand but otherwise if you forget the seat belts it is gleaming in here gorgeous gorgeous seats gorgeous color of the interior I'm not sure the camera will do it justice my favorite thing this button here see that that if I press it up raises the rear headrest how quirky and cool is that absolutely fantastic I suppose they somewhat act as a wind deflector when you've got the roof down anyway what I do want to show you also is under the bonnet because this is how we're going to fit these couple of parts I presume under here let's release the catch there it is and we've got the quirky pull out of the Mercedes emblem here like that lift it up and you can hear me over it it is so clean in here again I forgot just how well the condition of this thing is pretty spectacular considering I paid a grand for it it's a real shame it doesn't get used a lot truth be told the tires need doing and it needs a service and a lot of other things so I'd imagine it probably needs about a grand at least spent on it to get it running properly and you know when I've got the three other cars and I don't really have a use for this it's just hard to justify spending that money at least at the moment let's see how I feel after we've given it a little bit of love with the grill and the emblem now looking up here looks like the grill is going to be quite easy just sort of a few clips uh, to undo and then we pull it out sorry about my filming by the way it's all handheld and then this thing looks a little bit more complicated to get the original badge out and put the emblem in so we'll see if we can work it out as we go now let's close that for now I think I'll switch the car off but all seems to be running nicely there's no warning lights on the dash at all as you can see 139,732 miles on the clock oh my god it's got it's got over half a tank of fuel that upsets me that <laughs> Maybe we should siphon it. I've got the Porsche down here today. Maybe we could fill that up. But yeah, all warming up normally uh, in terms of how quickly. And idling very smoothly. And, wow, I mean, that is Mercedes engineering for you. These classic Mercs can't be beaten. And can I just say, I know I'm waffling a lot here, but if we get my shadow out of the way, when you look at the car from here with the roof down, it's beautiful, okay? I think it looks great. But these little sort of raised bits behind the headrest, they remind me of sort of a Ferrari Super America or like a 550 Barchetta. It might just be me, I might be pushing it a little bit, but it's the same sort of vibe. And at least to me anyway, I think it's basically a classic Ferrari, isn't it? Anyway, that's enough of that. I'm gonna switch the car off now. Fans just come on, so it's getting very loud. And uh, yeah, let's, let's switch it off here. Lovely stuff. We'll leave the key in. Should we leave the key in? I'll leave it on the seat. Switch that off, I'm gonna reopen the bonnet actually. Gosh, what a nightmare. Let's do that, lovely. And then, let's pop the camera down and see if we can fit these new bits. And potentially we'll drive it out into the sunlight a little bit and have a look when it's all done. As you can see actually, <laughs> this car has had a use and it's probably been a nice seat for my cat. Well, my parents' cat, should I say. Anyway, glorious, all working fine, very happy. Let's do some fitting.
Well, here I am sitting comfortably in the back of the Range Rover, and I just want to take this chance to say a big thank you to Surfshark for sponsoring today's video. Surfshark are a VPN or virtual private network, and this is something that I recommend absolutely everybody should have. Now, we all have personal and private data that we don't want anybody else to see, especially as it can get into the hands of criminals. And what a VPN does is encrypts all of the data that goes between your device and the internet and stops it from being accessed by anyone else, which for me as a YouTuber is particularly important because lots of my personal and sensitive data and my business is all online. Now you guys are obviously avid consumers of online content. You're watching YouTube right now, as am I. And the great thing about Surfshark VPN is it allows you to change your country or region and therefore access new content that you wouldn't otherwise be able to see online, such as on Netflix. For example, Friends is a show that I love to just put on in the background when I'm trying to wind down. And so when I'm away or working somewhere else where I'm not able to watch it, I can simply change my region with Surfshark VPN back to the UK and consume friends as I normally would at home. So if you don't yet have a VPN, you really should. I can't recommend it enough. And you should take advantage of this incredible offer because Surfshark, with my code It's Joel, offering you 83% off and an additional three months free on your membership. So use the code It's Joel. Go to surfshark.deals forward slash It's Joel. 83% off with my code It's Joel. Thanks so much, guys. And let's get back to the video. Okay, so let me reintroduce my dad, Danny, to the channel. Hi. Um, as I'm home and he's here, I thought actually it might be helpful to get a second pair of hands. Unfortunately, it has to be his, but we'll make do. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we'll, start, we'll start first with the badge, this thing, which I think um, it should just be a little push-out job in there. Yeah. Uh, it looks like there's a, there's a spring and then there's a couple of sort of... Oh, it's basically out anyway those two bits there, squeezing, yeah. and then it just comes out the other end. Yeah. Okay, I'll take it. Ah! Got it? Yeah, there we go. Oh, so it's literally just that. The only thing I've noticed if you hold that one, is this is smaller, the actual circumference of the Mercedes badge. Hmm. But I don't think that'll matter. No, that's right, it's the, it's the... It bit. should cover the hole still, shouldn't it? Yeah, it's Basically. the bit that goes into the hole that's the important bit, because that's obviously standing up, whereas this was flat on the bonnet. Yeah, okay. So that badge, the size of that badge doesn't matter. So in terms of getting this on, Hopefully. Will it just be a case of literally... Let's try it. Or maybe twist it in. Just, yeah, there we are, twist it in. The only thing is, of course... Don't, but no, you're not meant to bend the emblem. That's meant to be like that. Is you've got this, I don't know whether that'll clean off. Yeah, Let's I think see. it will, look. Oh, yeah, 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 but that's not insecure, not, is it? No, it's not insecure. So that... I don't know whether the mechanism we've just taken off So then we want to twist, it's that bottom bit we need to twist around, isn't it? Yeah, like that. Many hours later. Okay, well, hello everyone and welcome to Future Joel. Um, as you could see, it was very painful trying to watch us fit the little Mercedes emblem to the car. And it wasn't really going to plan because we're a couple of idiots that don't know what we're doing. So instead of making you watch 20 minutes of that, I thought I would be Future Joel and give you a more consolidated explanation as to what's happened. So this is the Mercedes emblem and it's broken. This uh, is attached to it, and essentially how you fit this, or at least I think I know now, is you sort of put it in from the top with this bit here, and then twist it, not the whole thing, but just that bracket, and it will click into place, and that's that. Now, unfortunately, it seems, and we worked out as we were doing it, that this one I've bought isn't quite the right size for this hole. The old one is back in, so you can't really tell. However, this is smaller here, and in order for it to click over, it wasn't quite large enough to, to fit into place. So we did try and use pliers and pry it in and all sorts of stuff, but that's what ultimately has led to this now being very much broken. So unfortunately, that is a mega fail. However, as you may have just caught a glimpse of there, we did successfully manage to do the grill. The grill is now fit into place, as you can see, and this, I'm pleased to say, was extremely easy. It's simply on this car, just two, I think they were eight millimeter torque screws. One here, one there. They came out and the old grill came out sort of this way towards me and the new one pretty much clipped back in and screwed back in. So that is how it looks and it looks much better. I'll tell you what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna switch the car on, turn it around and we can have a better look at 
the result, but it actually looks much, much better. Let's just turn it around anyway, and you guys will be able to have a better look. Fun stuff is that we get to start this again. Ah, there we go. So yes, in terms of the Mercedes emblem, let's put that in there, start it up, go. Oh, beautiful. In terms of the Mercedes emblem, well, I guess I'll have to order a new one. Hmm, interesting beeps. Parking brake. I don't know what that beep is. It's absolutely horrendous. Apologize for that. Anyway, let's turn this around so you can have a look at the new grill. Okay, into park, press the foot brake. Can you guys see that down there? There it is. Parking on, switch it off. And yeah, let me show you the front because I think if you can look past the fact we failed epically with the badge and the wheels are still the wheels, it's a big improvement in terms of aesthetic, much more of a homage or a recreation of what it once was new. It's amazing for a thousand pounds that this car looks as good as it does and I think this has just helped it ever so slightly. So I apologise that this has been quite a long video for simply a grill replacement but this turned out to be extremely easy as I said just a couple of bolts pull it out and back in with the new one. So that's great unfortunately though no hood emblem which would have been nice to see I think that will really top off the front end. In terms of next steps for this car as I mentioned at the start of the video I would be very keen to get these wheels replaced with some original ones. But everything else, I mean, the roof itself is working perfectly, it's still looking so, so clean and fresh from them. I Valley had their hands on it. Now, of course, coming around to the back of the car, we have this nasty, nasty scuff there. And it's a tricky one, really. I'm toying up whether to keep this car, get it back to how it once was. Unfortunately, it's sitting sad with a flat tire as well. So the tires need replacing. It needs a service, it will need new brakes. The brakes are not great on the car. They do work, but they definitely, I'm sure the pads or the discs or both need replacing. Um, and cosmetically, it could do with some love. So what do you guys think? Do you like this car? Do you want to see more content with it? I'm guessing you don't want to see more content of me trying or me and my dad trying to fit stuff because it's extremely, well, probably boring for you guys, but also whatever the opposite of helpful is, it's not helpful at all. But yeah, do I go ahead, see if I can get these sort of scratches fixed or new parts for it. This rear bumper should be a fairly easy thing, although this seems to sit, oh no, it's all part of the same bit. So yeah, should I sort of fix it up, restore it a little bit more, or is it time that I just move it on and let one of you guys have it? What do you think? I'd be very interested to know in the comments below. Like I say, so sorry for wasting your time on this video. I hope you still found it mildly entertaining. And I'm pleased that finally, after about two months of that grill sitting in the boot of the car, it does look much better, actually. It looks, just that tiny little thing has made a massive difference, I have to say. I'm very pleased with that. Not pleased with the other thing, but these things happen. Well, anyway, thanks so much for watching, guys. Big thank you again to Surfshark for sponsoring this video. It really helps the content to move along with great sponsors like them. And I'll see you all very, very soon.